Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative. And today what we are talking about is how I edit my photos. Cue the intro. Now, a lot of times people contact me regarding my edits for my photos. I don't know why. At this point, I feel like there's so many people on YouTube that do it way better. Maybe that's just because I watch so many YouTube videos. However, I get a lot of responses from my Instagram, my YouTube. How do you edit your photos? How do you do this? How do you do that? And I think I have a couple of tips and tricks on how to do this. I have been a photographer and slight retoucher for a long time. I am not a professional retoucher in the slightest. However, when it comes to it, a lot of times when I'm dealing with brands, I have to retouch their images on a professional level. Disclaimer, if I am not doing things the way you, you know, envision it, there's a lot of good YouTubers out there that do retouching videos and Photoshop videos way better than I do. I am not an expert. I just like to do it the way I like to do it. And if you like it too, then this video is for you. I think one of the main things you need to do is try to get everything in camera as best as possible. Recently, I did a beauty shoot with a very talented makeup artist. Her name is Ann Wynn, and she's worked with me on many shoots. And I was doing a beauty shoot for a agency. A lot of times you're gonna have situations like this where you're focusing on the makeup, you're focusing on the skincare product or whatever you're shooting, and you need to kind of enhance that in post. One of the first things I like to do when I am going through photos and, sorry, I just spit and I can see that shit. My first step when it comes to editing photos is I usually go through my iPhone and I use Visco and I like to just go through there, but I like to get a good idea of how it's gonna look using Visco or other mobile apps on my phone. My next step is I go through Lightroom and I adjust my shadows, uh, my color, temperature, I shoot raw, so a lot of this stuff is really easy on Lightroom. I organize the shots I like, I flag them, I do all of the typical Lightroom stuff. After I do that, I like to go to Photoshop. I take the photos that I like. My first step I usually do is I duplicate my photo. I have had a lot of issues where Photoshop has crashed on me and my stuff has been messed up. So I like to make a lot of layers and I like to save on a regular basis. After I duplicate my photo, I like to get right to blemish removal. Now, a lot of photographers are really big on skin, keeping the skin texture in the photo. Now, I think that is very important. However, it's a little overrated. Hear me out on this. If you look at any Vogue magazine or any Cosmo magazine or any magazine that's high end, if you really zoom into the image, there is the impression of skin detail rather than skin detail. What I mean by that is they preserve the skin detail to a minimum. So for me, I like to go somewhere in between. I like to not just completely porcelain dial the image, like, you know, just airbrush the whole thing where it's just, you look like one of those old school my, my, MySpace filters. I usually use the patch tool or the healing brush tool. I zoom in onto the image and I kind of just meticulously get rid of any blemish that I feel is necessary to get rid of. Different patches of skin, I try to match them. Um, getting rid of any blemish. This can take a long time. If you're really thorough, if you really want to go a little bit faster, I would go towards the healing brush tool rather than the patch tool. But both of these tools I use on a regular basis depending on the image. My next step after that is I like to go right into frequency separation. What frequency separation is basically is preserving the skin detail, but at the same time smoothing it out. Now, that is not the real description of what that means, but that's how I look at it. So what I usually do is I have this action that I use on Photoshop. I got it from Flern a couple years back. I love it. It's a frequency separation action that you can plug right in there, get it in there, adjust the blur so that the skin is looking okay, but the eye detail is still there. And then you can move from there. What that actually does is makes a skin detail layer and a under skin detail layer, if that kind of makes sense. What I usually do is on the low frequency level, I will use a paintbrush at a very, very low flow, around two or 3%. Then I use the color dropper tool to basically sample colors and paint. 
underneath the skin. Makes a really good look. And by doing this, you can actually get an airbrush look and keep some of the skin detail from the frequency separation. After that, if things are a little bit too blotchy still, I will use the lasso tool and I will select parts of the image and then Gaussian blur those, those parts. This is a great move to get the skin looking very glossy, but also airbrushed. After I do that, I will usually duplicate the image and then go into dodging and burning. I like to use the Photoshop tools of dodge and burn, basically making a dodge layer, dodging on top of the image, and then lowering the opacity, and then doing the same thing for the burn layer. Dodge and burn basically is light and dark. What I like to do is accentuate the highlights of the image with the dodging and darken the image where I think it needs to be. Dodging and burning is a really good tool when it comes to makeup or beauty type of photography because then you can highlight makeup. It's a great way to make beauty shots really pop. After I do that move, I go right into either liquefying the image, which is kind of like moving the body, making things a little smaller or whatever, stuff like that. A lot of times I do liquefying just because my lenses tend to distort the image and I like to bring it in a little bit. After I liquefy the image, I usually do a thing called sharpening. When it comes to sharpening, sharpening images is not always necessary, but a lot of times when you're shooting beauty, you're really close up, you might have got the eyes not that in focus, and you might need to actually just sharpen them up just a little bit. One of the moves I really like to do is I like to duplicate the layer and then use Shift U on the keyboard. Then I will change the layer mode to overlay and then change the whole thing to a smart object. I can now go to the filters above and go to the high pass filter and then adjust it between one to two and that will sharpen up your eyes and not really sharpen up too much of the skin and the face. After that, my final move that I like to do is I like to use selective color. By using selective color, I can change the reds, I can change the yellows, I can change the blacks, the whites. I can really get a good adjustment of color and really mess around with the type of looks I wanna go with. I usually tend to put blue into my shadows, but everyone has the type of look that they're going for, that's just the look I usually go for. For these beauty images, I didn't mess around with selective color too much because I didn't wanna mess around with the makeup that my makeup artist actually put on the model. But that's what I had to say about editing my photos. Now, if you really want some more in-depth photography tips when it comes to editing, I can do that in the future. Every photo has a different type of look and every type, different type of edit that you can do for those type of photos. But let me know in the comments if you like this video and if you have any more questions regarding photography. And I will see you next time, hopefully on an actual shoot and not on an editing video.